Okay. Hey guys, Terry here from Trotter Made, and in today's video, we're gonna go over belt making, at least using vegetable tan leather. And I'm gonna get to turn this buckle and some of this beautiful leather over here into a belt. Uh, be making this for, as a gift for a friend, so I thought I'd let you guys tag along in my process of, of the different things that I do in belt making. And before we get started on that, if you watched the last video on edge burnishing on vegetable tan leather, um, we didn't know how to include close-up pictures of the different edges that were finished inside that video. So Charlene's adding them inside this one. We'll let that go through for a couple of seconds before we carry on. Right, so the first place you're going to start with belt making is obviously you're going to have a nice buckle and you're going to have a piece of leather. Now the trouble is when you're starting is that your piece of leather that you're going to get for yourself is not going to have a straight edge. So the first essential step in belt making is to give yourself a nice clean straight edge on, a, on the piece of leather that you've purchased for yourself. The way that I do this when I get a new art, I've already done it on this piece guys. Um, but the way that I would do that on any piece of new hide is I've got myself two precision uh, stainless steel rulers. Now you do get these in much longer lengths where it would be a, a single unit. I didn't have one of those. So this is the method I've used for many years um, and found it to work. Because these are precision stainless rulers, the two edges of them when pushed together uh, obviously create one straight edge. So. What I do is on that on the piece of leather when I get a new a new hide and I'm uh, busy preparing it to cut belts, I will put that as close as I can to each side of a an edge, uh, make sure that those are marked up, and then take my scratch all and uh, um, obviously mark off a line over there, and then cut that so you've got a nice straight edge to work with. So once you've cut yourself a nice straight edge on the side of leather that you'll be using, the next step is obviously to cut that piece of leather that you're going to be using for your belt. Before you do that though, um, you, need to check the, you need to check the buckle. So this is a one and a half inch buckle. Now the thing is what I've seen a lot of guys do in the past is that because they get a one and a half inch buckle, they think that the strap needs to be one and a half inches wide. But the problem is um, when you cut that to the exact width of the buckle, like I've done here with this piece of test leather just to show you, is that when it goes into the buckle, it actually creates a, because it's so tight on the, on the leather, it creates like this funny flare at the tip of the, at the, tip of the buckle where it's, it's just not visually as appealing for me. So the first thing you wanna do is obviously just check that the measurements of your, of your buckle. I do it in millimeters, guys. Um, I, I'm in South Africa and obviously we work off of uh, the system, but I also do find it a lot easier because I can go now that I know that this the, the width of the buckle, um, at least where the belt's gonna be sitting, is 38 millimeters. So I can take off a millimeter from each side of the buckle, which will give me then 36 millimeters, and 36 millimeters will be the width of the strap that I'll be cutting to fit inside here. So that'll give, in actual fact, what that does is, um, when I do create that fold of the leather, because belting leather is quite thick, uh, the pressure of the fold actually creates a perfect fit creates a really nice fit inside the buckle where there's just that slight, slight little bit of, of movement but no pressure on the side of the leather that's causing this, I don't think, a pleasant looking fold. Um, so I want to be cutting this piece of leather at 36 millimeters wide, which fits this one and a half inch buckle. Guys, please note though that I've had a lot of different buckles over the years and each one of them are a little bit different. So do check, don't trust the packaging. So the easiest way to cut that strap of leather that you're going to be using for your belt is with one of these something called a strap cutter um, this one of mine is i don't know at least seven years old now so it's done a lot of strap cutting one of the things i must let you know though is that when you are using a strap cutter um, as you're pulling down on your piece of leather after several belts your straight edge is going to start developing a curvature um, it's just one of the things that happen when you start using a strap cutter so in today's video, I am not going to be using a strap cutter. I want to be using the pattern knife that I make. This is the, the original, original one. Um, so I'm going to be cutting out this belt strap with the pattern knife. 
Um, it's a little bit extra fun for so me and I'm gonna enjoy doing that. Guys, so if you don't have a strap cutter, um, you can do it with the method I'm using now where I'm marking several lines across that leather and you can just use a kicker knife. Um, these things are readily available. You might even have one at home already. So use what you've got available to make the projects you wanna make. I've also decided after checking the measurement again inside that belt, um, I'm doing this strap at 37 millimeters, whereas the belt itself is, I don't know, around about 38 millimeters uh, wide. Well, at least the buckle, I should say. The buckle's at 38 millimeters wide. So the strip of leather that I'm using here is just slightly smaller than the width of the belt buckle at its base. Um, and this is just gonna allow it to sit a lot easier inside that area. Guys, so if you have got one of my pattern knives and you're wanting to make a belt like I'm doing it now, um, you'll notice two things when you do it. Obviously the curvature of the blade uh, allows you to naturally just pull a nice straight line and this whole curve over here is lining up perfectly to the, uh, the line that I've got there. So I can actually see my cut as I'm going, uh, going through the leather. It's kind of like this bullseye marking the track for me. The other thing that you'll notice what I'm doing is my I'm obviously right-handed. My left-hand thumb is behind on this curvature over here. So I'm gently, I'm pushing down with this hand and I'm actually moving forward with my back hand and the thumb. So there you can see how I'm using the knife. Pulling back and then pushing down and this hand is pushing a lot forward. And what I'll also do is I like to work with the work on top of me. So I don't try and move my body and keep myself, get myself into uncomfortable positions, I move the leather to where I'm most comfortable. So this is how I, this is actually how I do all my leather work. I, I move the leather to the position that I'm most comfortable in. So I keep pulling that leather back, I don't move my body. This allows for much straighter cuts on any project that you're doing. The nice thing about the curvature on this blade is that I know that it's pulling a straight line for me and I don't really have to worry about any uneven curvature on the blade, and that's it. There's a beautiful strap cut. All right, so now you've cut your strap. Next step, just give yourself a nice squared off edge, at least for one side where the, where the buckle is going to go. The nice thing about using one of these green mats is that it's um, got these markings all on it. So I can I can straighten up I can straighten up my edge that I've just cut, um, and that'll be square to that line over there. So I can just make sure that that is straight over there, straight over there. Now I've got a nice straight, or at least 90 degree to each side, which is going to go really well for the buckle that's going to now be fitted. So I'm going to be fitting the belt buckle now to this, um, this edge that we just squared off. The other side I've left as is. That'll get cut off just now. On a belt buckle this size, which is a one and a half inch wide belt buckle, um, I tried many different measurements over the years and of the many belts that I made. I stick to a two and a half inches. Um, I'll mark a line. Two and a half inches is, is around about 63 millimeters. Once I've got that mark, I can use my oblong punch. Now these oblong punches come in various different sizes. You get them in one inch. Um, this is actually a one inch one, a three quarter inch. One inch guys, by the way, is about 25 millimeters. A three quarter inches, 20 millimeters. Um, they come in all these different sizes. Some of them are actually marked in millimeters and some of them are marked in inches. So you have to work out. I'm gonna be using a 25 millimeter, one inch one over here. 
So from the two and a half inch mark now, I go backwards. So now I've got a mark. I'll set the oblong punch coming down from that mark. And that will give me just the right amount to cover the keeper on that side and stitch this in. So what I'm going to do first before I mark this in is I'm going to check for center point. So I've given myself something to now. Guys, and this is the same as what I said inside the inside the stitching video. Do not try and do this horizontally. Look down the line so you can see and check for evenness. I'm now pretty happy with that, being as close to the center as possible. So I'm going to punch through. There it is, punch through. Let's see what that is looking like. That's looking good. It's a bit heavy over here, so we're gonna have to lap scarf this section down and then make our, our belt loop that's gonna come in over here and then stitch both sides. And obviously all the beveling and stuff but it's starting to take shape so before i carry on now i'm going to be doing the same steps that you'll see in the previous video which uh, was on how to finish edges so i'm going to take my smallest beveler that i've got and i'm going to just remove the finest sliver of leather off of the the complete edge so what this is going to do is it, it just prevents as the belt is being worn from this edge getting kind of any any um deflection and it gives it a nice little finishing off curvature it's one of those little details that if you're making it for somebody or making them to sell your clients may not even pick it up but they certainly will recognize the quality it's one of those funny things i found that um you can hand you can hand a person two variations of the same product and they may look at one and not realize uh, all the little differences that you've put onto the item, but they'll be able to tell you which one is better without knowing the reason for it. So that's why I take the time to do all these little, little details. Guys, again, as you'll notice, when I'm doing the... Um, or at least using my edge beveler. This is the same process I do with any of my movements, like I showed you in the cuts earlier. I move the piece of leather to where my body is most comfortable. I don't stretch out my arms. I don't work in places that I'm uncomfortable. These are. This is one of those um, those things that will improve your uh, the quality of your of your work um, because the more comfortable position you can be in the cleaner your cuts are going to be, the cleaner this work's going to be. Um, for example, if I'm stretched out now, my, my whole angle is inconsistent. Um, it just creates inconsistencies. All right, so be, before we lap scarf this and place this buckle in, we need to make a keeper or a belt loop. Um, as I mentioned, I've cut this strap at 37 millimeters width. So I'm going to make the keeper half that width. It gives a nice visual look to the whole belt gives a very balanced look when the keepers uh, 50 percent of the width of the of the strap um, so that's going to be around about 18 millimeters wide on the keeper guys this is a lap scarver or at least this is my version of the lap scarver this is the one that i'll make um, and it's sitting at an the, the angle that i've made the blade at is so that you can it squares up obviously easily to the portion that you're going to um, be scarving off and I can just push that all the way through the through the leather on both sides. And there's a nice thin dot edge. So I'm going to use a real easy, easy way to um, get this keeper to stay together. I'm using a two tooth um, iron. Uh, this is a four millimeter width. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that. I'm going to give it a little bit of a gap from the edge. 
plus minus in the middle. And plus minus in the middle. So I've got a hole on each side. I then take a single needle that's been threaded and pop that needle through. Guys, all I'm doing now is just creating a knot. That's really all that I'm doing. All right, so there I've got a got it looped. I'm just going to pull that tight now and knot it. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll carry on with the project. But there you can see how it how it looks, and I'm literally going to tie a knot underneath there with the two pieces of thread. Remember, if you are using quality tools, keep them sharp. A sharp knife. Is, a, is your best friend. In actual fact, having a blunt knife can be very dangerous because that's when you start putting uh, too much pressure on the edge to do the work. When it's razor sharp, the knife behaves as it should. So I keep my tools always in razor sharp condition. So what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna be thinning out that edge that's gonna be uh, coming down the side over the buckle and over the keeper. So. We're going to be thinning out this section of leather over here. This makes for a much more comfortable belt for, for the wearing of the belt. Um, it's just less bulk added over here. And I think aesthetically it actually looks a little bit better as well. So the way that I like to do this is I come just about to the top side of the, of where that loop is going to be. And I start thinning from that point. So I'm going to thin out that whole section over there with the lap scarf that I make. If you are going to get one of my lap scarvers, inside the box, there will be a strop that I have made. Um, so if you get one off of our website, the link will be below. Um, it will also include a, a strop in the box. So all I'm doing over here, I'm going to take this slow. So I'm just, I'm thinning out this whole edge. And this, this leather is, is very thick, very fibrous. I do tend to take it a bit slow my first my first couple of cuts. You can see that it's getting a a nice gentle taper going the whole way down. Now certain leathers and certain certain thicknesses as well. Um, I will scarve in a single movement going through. But this leather over here, I just take it bit by bit, thinning it out evenly and consistently. What I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna take around about 10 millimeters from the, from the edge, and I'm just gonna work that down quite thin. So all that's done is, it's thinned out that right on the edge. So when the whole lot comes together, it's nice and comfortable. Guys, if you, if you do want burnished edges, now's the time to do it before the buckle goes on. Um, the previous video on this channel's got my technique of how I burnish an edge. This particular belt though, I'm gonna finish off with this cloth that is, I've been using this for, I don't know how many years, a lot of years. It's soaked with lanolin oils and beeswax and a whole bunch of different things. So I'm actually just going to heat rub these edges with this oil. On this project I'm using, these are John James 002 needles and I'm using 0 0.8 target thread which will hopefully pair very well with these new irons that I've got. These are by Sienna Brooks. This is a 4mm iron.
So this is where that lap scarf on that belt keeper, on this belt loop, really comes into its own now. Is that you can push it. You can also get it really nice and, and, and close up to that stitch line, which gives a better fit on the whole item. I mean, that belt, keeps, that belt loop there is really secured now. One of the things that will really be helpful to you if you're going to be working with thicker leathers like this, especially on a belt project, is a little pair of jeweler's pliers. These come in incredible handy, especially when you're doing your back stitches and um, sometimes that thread sits, it's sitting so tightly that it's quite tricky to get through. So those little pliers really make it much easier on your hands. There's the last stitch coming through, at least the last back stitch. There you can see it pulling into place and there it seats itself neatly next to the other stitch. Alright, so if you are going to be making a belt as a gift for a friend and you're not going to have the opportunity to custom fit it, which I am going to be doing with this one, you can ask them to send you the measurement of their current favorite belt and take the measurement from that point of the buckle, so the front part of the buckle, to the hole in the belt that they're currently wearing that fits them best. And that'll be the measurement to where you need to place your hole. Obviously, if you're custom fitting it for someone, it's nice and easy, you put it around your waist, or if you're custom fitting it for yourself, put it around your waist, um, get it to a point where it feels comfortable, on your waist, that'll be your perfect fitting hole right over there. I like to do three holes in the belts that I make, so I'll do one that's a perfect fit and one on either side of it. So I hope you've enjoyed tagging along with me on this how I make a leather belt video. If you've got any value out of this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button. We're gonna be adding more and more content to this channel all the time and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.